public lands are the remnants of the public domain, the 1.8 billion acres the United States acquired from 1781 to 1867. The federal government disposed of parts of the public domain to raise revenues. In 1862, the United States made a general grant to states for use in financing agricultural and mechanical colleges. The result was the land-grant college. More than 125 million acres were granted to railroads to help finance construction. A series of homestead acts granted land to homesteaders to encourage the settlement of the West. The first national park, Yellowstone, was created in 1872. And in 1905, the Forest Service was established to manage federal forest reserves, which had been set aside in 1891. The land that remained after more than a century of disposal was believed to consist mainly of rangelands and deserts, lands used for mining and livestock grazing. Livestock grazing on the public domain was unregulated, chaotic, and fraught with conflicts. Cattle and sheep heavily overgrazed the range. In 1934, Congress passed the Taylor Grazing Act to help stabilize the livestock industry and conserve the public range. This act authorized the setting up of grazing districts and created the division of grazing in the Department of the Interior. This division later became the Grazing Service, which in 1946 merged with the General Land Office to form the Bureau of Land Management. By the mid-1960s, BLM was responsible for carrying out the mandates of over 5,000 land laws, many with conflicting purposes. The Bureau had a myriad of responsibilities, from the Outer Continental Shelf oil and gas leases to timberlands in Oregon. It included spectacular natural areas set aside for their unique beauty, outstanding wildlife, or historic values and the responsibility for managing wild horses and burros. With the passage in 1976 of the Federal Land Policy and Management Act, many outdated laws were repealed. BLM received a clear congressional mandate to retain and manage the public lands for multiple use and sustained yield for the benefit of all Americans. Since 1976, the Bureau has worked hard toward this purpose, but our task has been difficult because of the multitude of resources and the conflicting interests surrounding them. Energy resources are some of the public land's greatest contributions to the American economy. The public lands possess a wealth of locatable or hard rock minerals, such as gold, silver, copper, lead, zinc. The energy potential of public lands is immense. Oil shales on public lands make up the largest known reserves in the free world. And more than 95 million acres of public lands are potentially valuable as sources of geothermal energy. Because of its scarcity, water is one of the most precious resources of the public lands. Watersheds must be managed to retain as much water as possible on the land. To help retain the soil and manage watershed, various types of stabilization projects have been carried out. Public lands abound in cultural resources, thousands of remnants of our historic and prehistoric past, from homesteads, historic structures, and ghost towns to rock art and Indian ruins. In its vastness, in its variety of landscapes, and in its scenic beauty, the public lands offer us almost limitless recreation. BLM has many developed recreation sites, but the greatest opportunities are for dispersed recreation, hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, off-highway vehicle use, and winter sports. Visitors spend hundreds of millions of visitor hours on the public lands. 
conflicting resource needs and uses add to challenges in managing the public lands. But BLM doesn't make decisions in a vacuum. Great effort is expended in encouraging the public to give us its views as well as information needed for decision making. Every American has a stake in the public lands and in their management. The management of these lands directly affects the quality of our lives. Whether we have enough energy to heat our homes and drive our cars, whether cities and towns will have the land they need to expand and provide housing for their growing populations, whether enough land is set aside near populated centers for outdoor recreation, whether we can find wilderness areas in which to retreat for solitude. The public lands and their resources are our national treasure, a treasure we need to manage and develop wisely.